Welcome back to the Houston, Texas franchise on Madden 23, guys. And we finally hit our bye week. Week 13, and our Texans sitting undefeated in the NFL right now. 12-0, best in the AFC South, best in the NFL. Uh, real quick, let's take a look at the standings. And as you can see, we are sitting on top of the world. 12-0, uh, 12 up, 12 down. The Buccaneers are second in the league right now at 10 and 1. You got the Raiders 9 and 2, the Giants, Titans, Colts, Broncos, Commanders, all 7 and 4. So very top heavy. Uh, you got two teams in the AFC uh, that have really good records and one team in the NFC. And then the rest of the teams are 6 and 5. You got the Bills, the Jets, and the Patriots. Now let's take a look at stats so far through the season. Caleb Stanford, almost 4,300 yards, 40 touchdowns with 18 interceptions. He's having one of those MVP type seasons uh, for our Texans. Uh, the past couple games, he's just been on fire throwing the ball. Um, I'm very proud of how we're developing him as well. A gunslinger, man. 99 throw power, 95 accuracy, 94 medium, 94 short. Uh, he's come a long way. Only thing I don't like, man, the turnovers continue to bother him. Not as many as the previous years. Last year, uh, 31 interceptions in his rookie year. He threw for 26. Uh, I, I have a feeling at the end of the season he might finish with 20, uh, at least 20. But, you know, he's still completing 66% of his balls. Uh the yardage is insane, 354 yards per game. He's just become a dominant QB, and I think the past couple of weeks he's really shown um, what he's capable of doing. Uh, as we take a look at the numbers, 400 yards last week versus the Cowboys with six touchdowns, 324 versus the Titans with five touchdowns. Uh, the Browns, he had three touchdowns with two picks. The Ravens, three touchdowns with four interceptions. So a lot of multiple games down here with two or more touchdowns. He had five touchdowns versus the Chiefs, no interceptions. The Eagles, uh, four touchdowns with no interceptions. So uh, he's kind of starting to to show why he's the best quarterback in the league uh, by a large margin. On the ground, we have another 1,000-yard back in Damian Priest, 260 carries for 1,387 yards and 12 touchdowns. Uh, I'll say this for DP31, man. Uh, it hasn't been easy and has not been easy uh, you see he's gone over 2,000 yards the last three seasons. This year, I don't know if he'll make it to 2,000 yards, uh, which I'm okay with. Um, we want to keep some of the tread on those tires uh, with the 260 carries. Still a lot, only 13 or 12 weeks into the season. Um, and as you can see, there's some games in here he did not scrape 100 yards. 92 yards versus the Ravens, 99 versus the Titans. 88 versus the Eagles, but then he had other games where he went crazy. The Browns, he went for 172 uh, the Commanders, he went for 159. And then uh, the first game of the season versus the Colts, he went for 151. Now, we said we wanted to get Julius Temple some more touches this season. And I feel like he's done a solid job, man. 90 carries, 390 yards, seven touchdowns. Um, he's probably unhappy. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, he probably wants a little bit more. But I feel like he's gotten better. Uh, as you can see, he's got more touches than he did last year. The yards aren't there, but the touchdowns are. Uh, he had a breakout game uh, in week seven when Damian Pierce was out, 29 carries, 133 yards and a touchdown. Um, and then versus the Colts in week one, he went for 100 yards. Uh, but as you can see, the past couple weeks, man, he had a DNP versus the Commanders, only six carries for 40 yards versus the Browns. Uh, the blowout win over the Titans, he had 12 carries for 36 yards and two scores. And then last week versus the Cowboys, only one carry for two yards. But I feel like where we've shined the most this year has been in the wide receiver room, and Trey Graham has taken that next step uh, to become a superstar. 81 catches, 1,319 yards with 14 receiving touchdowns. Uh, like I mentioned last week, he was able to secure uh, his superstar development, and I feel like he's going to exceed over 121 catches this year. Um, he has 81 last year. He had 121 for 1788. Uh, I think he'll break both of those barriers um, before the end of the season. He's already got the most touchdowns in his career this year. Um, and it's amazing because he's a slot wide receiver. And he's doing an amazing job running routes, uh, catching the ball from Caleb Stanford. He's definitely become our wide receiver number one. 
But I feel like this rookie, man, Deron Norwood, has really stepped up and taken over the league, man. 54 grabs, 972 yards with six scores. He's become our deep threat. Um, and as you can see, he's got superstar development, which is insane as a rookie, man. Like I mentioned, 54 grabs, 972, six scores. Uh, but I'm, I've been impressed the past like few weeks. Like He has really come on major since week six. Uh, he was injured uh, during the first game of the season. I think it was like a non-contact play. He was out for four weeks and then exploded on the scene versus the Chiefs. Seven grabs, 52 yards, and two touchdowns. And then he just went on a streak of over 100 yards for a couple weeks here. Uh, he went from 152 versus the Titans, 250 versus the Bengals, 133 versus the Commanders, 130 versus the Ravens, and then 120 versus the Browns. Uh, then he had 79 versus the Titans and only 56 yards last week versus the Cowboys. Um, again, I think that we have a very good young wide receiving group uh, with Trey Graham leading the way. Deron Norwood is here. Brevin Jordan having a solid year, man. 43 grabs, 621 and seven scores. Scotty Miller, our matchup nightmare, 33 grabs, 415 and two scores. And then T. Higgins is kind of like the odd man out in this group right now. 30 grabs, 350, but he has six scores. He's become like more of a red zone threat for us. Um, we love to have him uh, spread out, like sp split out to the left and run slant routes uh, when we're close to the end zone. Uh, as you can see, the numbers are down. I feel like he's going to get more than eight, ca eight touchdowns this year, um, but uh, his receiving numbers will be down and his uh, receiving yards will be down as well. Uh, honestly, at the end of the season, I can see T. Higgins being a trade candidate uh, for this team. So with Christian Watson, man, 21 grabs, 315 and a touchdown. He was on Lovey Smith's bad side uh, because of a drop. Uh, so he was a little frustrated and has not seen a lot of playing time since. All right, let's take a look at the offensive line. Uh, Brian Scott uh, became the starting left tackle after we traded away Lermy Tunsil. And he's done an okay job. He's given up six sacks. Uh, I feel like it's more than that. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, he has had some struggles against uh, the speedier offense or speedier defensive lineman. Um, gotten beat up a little bit, but, you know, he's doing a solid job. James Daniel, four sacks, giving up. Daryl Williams is giving up three sacks. Kenyon Green's giving up two. Uh, Elgin Jenkins is giving up two. Uh, Adam Hitches is giving up two. Josh Roden. And uh, Johnny Simmons each giving up one. As you can see, man, we've had some guys get beat up, uh, miss some time. Uh, but I'm praying that everybody can stay healthy uh, through the rest of the season and we can go into the playoffs with a full offensive line with no injuries. To the defense side of the ball, we go. Um, I think we're playing a little bit better, uh, having a tough time against the pass. But we are, I think, the best team in the NFL against the run. Jabril Peppers leads the team. With 88 tackles, followed by Christian Harris with 85. Darnell Savage has 57. Cortland Davidson with 56. And then you've got Derek Singley with 49. Trayvon Mullen has 46. And then Jeffrey Simmons with 32. Uh, it's kind of concerning. A lot of our secondary players uh, leading this team with tackles. We have got to see the defensive line, our linebackers, uh, being able to make more plays, uh, especially against the run. But the problem I think we're running into is we're running into a lot of teams who are pass heavy, um, which can work in our favor. I think we have arguably one of the best defensive lines in the league uh, led by Tavares Branch. He's got 10 and a half sacks. Jeffrey Simmons with eight and a half sacks. Uh, Damon Holcomb has come on here of late with five and a half sacks. I think we found a star uh, in the making, man. This kid is only a rookie. And he had a breakout game, was it last week or three weeks ago versus the Browns with four sacks, seeing a lot more playing time. Um, he is our fourth defensive lineman in our dime package. We put him on the outside and we allow um, Jonathan Grenard to kick into the inside to play D tackle. Grenard with four and a half sacks. Uh, Demetrius Blaylock, another player who's getting a lot of playing time too. Chris Har Christian Harris has a sack, so is Rogan. Uh, Blake Cashman, uh, Calhoun, Clancy, and Peppers has half a sack. But arguably, our two corners have got to be uh, defensive players of the year. Derek Stingley has 14 interceptions on the season. That's an insane number. But then you look at his teammate, Trayvon Mullen. 
He's got 14 as well. These two have become a dynamic duo. Ball hawks. You cannot throw on the outside against these guys uh, because they're just going to go up and snag the ball and take it away from you. Uh, teams have been trying to run curl routes, and it's nothing there for them. And, I mean, even Cortland Davidson, our nickel corner, has six interceptions on the year. Uh, you got Jabril Peppers down here with three. McCullum has three. And then Christian Harris with one. But like I mentioned, man, these two corners, Mullen and Stingley, uh, have really set themselves apart in the NFL. And this is why I think Stingley should be uh, defensive player of the year. He's got five touchdowns. Pick sixes. That's insane. 14 interceptions. Five of them are pick sixes. You got Trayvon with one. You got McCullum with one. And then you got Christian Harris down here with a, a touchdown as well. In the kicking game, we have probably the most automatic kicker in the league with Kai Fairbairn. 18 of 18 on field goals. He's got a long of 55. But we have missed three extra points. Thankfully, it hasn't cost us anything. Uh, punt game, Cameron Johnson, only 19 punts for 18 or 818 yards. He's got three inside the 20 with one touchback. Uh, the return game, I think we found another star, man, Cam Foster. Uh, we picked this guy up. I don't. Did we draft him? I can't remember if we drafted him or if we signed him in free agency. We drafted him in the sixth round three years ago. Been trying to find... Uh, a, a place for him on the field, and we finally found one in a return game. 894 yards, one kickoff return that went 96 yards to the crib. Uh, but in the punt game, this dude is even more dangerous. Uh, 29 returns for 383 yards and two scores. So taking a look at our team ranks, obviously we have the number one offense in the league, man, averaging 46 points per game. Uh, our passing offense is number two with 336 yards through the air. We have the best rushing offense, 152 yards. We have the we're sixth in the league in, in defensive points per game, only giving up 23 points per game. We are at the bottom when it comes to defending the pass, almost 300 yards. But against the run, though, only 68 yards putting us in first place. So, uh, very happy with how we're playing. If we can keep this momentum going uh, through the break, we're going to be a scary team when it comes to the playoffs. So talking about the playoffs, let's look at the playoff picture. Obviously, in first place, we are uh, the number one team in the AFC, so we will get the first round by, and I think we have that pretty much locked up right now. The Raiders are the second seed, followed by the Buffalo Bills at number three. The Bengals are four. The Titans in at five. The Colts are six, and the Broncos are number seven. So a lot of our like con like our division foes are in the playoffs right now. Two or three out of the four teams, uh, us. The Colts and the Titans. So let's look at the NFC side. The Buccaneers, number one seed in the NFC, uh, followed by the Giants at number two. The Seahawks are three. Then you got the Packers in at four. The Commanders are five. The Falcons are six. And the Panthers are seventh. Now, this should be a fun matchup. I honestly think the Buccaneers are the best team in the NFC. Uh, Tyler Huntley has this team playing out of control. Uh, so I think it would be a fun matchup to go up against him uh, and this Buccaneers team in the Super Bowl. Looking for our third straight. Coach, you have to be happy heading into your bye week in first place. Any special plans for the week off? I can't speak for the coaches, but I know the players have something planned to build some midseason chemistry and have us ready coming out of the break. A team bonding retreat held by the players has brought the team closer together, plus 10 morale for all players. But the players are having a tough time getting back into the swing of things following the time off. They're going to lose five awareness points for all players in the next game. So let's take a look at the rest of the schedule. The Giants are up next in week 14. Uh, and then we have the Packers and Bills to wrap up the regular season at home. Uh, but then we hit the road for our last two games, taking on the Jaguars and the Steelers. Now the, the decision is going to have to be made early. Do we play everybody and try to finish the season 17 and 0? Or do we rest our players in week 18 and get ready for the playoffs? Before we get out of here, we've got some upgrades. First up, Jonathan Grenard on the defensive line. He's been hurting for an upgrade. Um, I'm going to go speed rusher for him. He's up to an 89 overall. Uh, he gets a plus one to awareness, pursuit, tackle, and plus two to finesse move. Our rookie, Andrew Thompson the third, the strong safety Hasn't really seen a lot of playing time. Been more of a special teams player for us. 
Uh, I think we have to go hybrid for him. Uh, I love his speed, 93 speed. Yeah, we're going to go hybrid for him. Bumping him up to a 76 overall. Coming along real nice, plus two to awareness, plus one man coverage and tackle, and a plus two to zone coverage. Here's right tackle Adam Hitchens. Um, we've got to get him run block. So let's go. We'll go power for him. Staying at a 75. Uh, he gets a plus four to awareness, a plus one to run block power, and a plus one to strength. Okay. Okay. I, I would love to see his run block go up. Only at a 64 right now. Really good pass blocker. He could be a, a future left tackle for somebody. Uh, but right now, we have him playing on the right side behind Elgin Jenkins. And last but certainly not least is our backup QB. This is Matt Drummond. Uh, he saw a, f a couple of plays uh, a couple of weeks ago versus the Titans when it was the blowout win. Um, very strong arm for him. He's got 96 throw power. The accuracy just isn't there quite yet. Uh, so maybe we look to go strong arm. Bumping him up to a 68 overall. And he'll get a plus two to awareness and a plus one to throw power. So almost at a 99 throw power, but I want to work on his accuracy uh, for the rest of his rest of the season. So that puts a bow on the bye week. Now we return home and get ready to take on the eight and four Giants. Dawson Knox leading this team, man. 42 grabs, 510 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, they come in averaging about 29 points per game. They have the 11th best rush offense and the 14th best passing offense, but their defense is not good at all. They give up 31 points per game. Uh, they give up 110 yards on the ground and 280 yards through the air. Uh, let's see if we can be able to take advantage of these Giants and their weak defense. Uh, in the next video, week 14, man, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. Don't forget to hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Facebook, Twitter, and IG. And come through and join the Discord fam. And we'll talk from NRG Stadium. And we welcome in the 8-4 and four Giants. Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace. Big shout out to all the members that support this channel. If you would like to become a member, check out the link down below.